we're going to get it started with some lo-fi hip-hop beats to relax and study to. Ready? Go. <laughs> Welcome to High Tide with Kai, episode one of 7,000. That's right. No, I'm just kidding. I have no idea how many episodes we'll have, but it is fun to get started with episode one. Episode one, we are going to go through the history of inked playmats, now inked gaming, and the origin story of Kraken Cards. So it is now 2020. Uh, we're recording this in early October of 2020, and we're going to go all the way back to 2011 when Inked Playmats was born in Albany, Oregon, Willamette Valley. It's a wine country here in Oregon. So Thomas Poole and his family uh, launched Inked Playmats in 2011. Inked Playmats was launched because uh, Thomas and uh, his friend Jeff who is still an all-star for Inked Gaming. Jeff is uh, designs. Uh, he, he does all the, the print files for Inked Gaming still. Um, they both wanted custom mats. So they went down and bought a heat press on Craigslist and just started making you know custom mats for themselves because uh, they were both, you know, both and, and still are Magic players. Uh, so that's kind of where the business started was 2011 them just doing it out of a garage kind of kind of for fun and then they realized their friends wanted some uh, and then that kind of just blew up from there they made a they made a website they got to got to uh, sourcing in a bunch of new new play mats and um, got in some a nice printer and then that like moved into 2012 where they expanded into other uh, other mats so they 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 started in on wargaming mats and panoramic desk pads and all sorts of other stuff. Um, so that was the early days. They were living, uh, they were working in a garage uh, in the, the house that, that Thomas and his family were living in. Thomas was still working a full-time job. And this was just a side, just a side hustle as, as some people in the industry call it now. Uh, and, and it turned into so much more, um, as, as the years go on. And I am very, very lucky that in 2013, uh, I was able to start seeing it firsthand. I met Thomas, uh, I met Thomas at a state championships up in Portland for Magic the Gathering. Uh, there was this, you know, little Corvallis Albany table where everybody from the areas kind of knew each other. And I had met uh, Minhauser, one of our good friends from from uh, Corvallis, Oregon. He now lives in New York City as a doctor. But I had met Minhauser, and I was hanging out with him, and I saw Thomas. Uh, it was about five minutes before the for, before states started, before round one started, and Thomas hadn't even submitted his deck list. He hadn't uh, sleeved his cards, and so I offered to Thomas to help sleeve his cards. And I remember... Uh, he looked over across the table at Minhauser, and Minhauser just kind of gave him a little head nod, like, "Yeah, yeah, Mitch is okay." So that's that's where I met him, and then uh, probably I don't know, maybe five or six months later, uh, I had graduated from from uh, Oregon State University at that point, and I was looking for some part time jobs because the job market was you know a little dried up in in the major that I had had. Uh, focused on and I was like hey Thomas you know if you have any extra warehouse work let me know I'm looking for some part-time jobs to kind of pay rent and uh, he got me into his house one night and I was taping tubes for him uh, shipping tubes so they had they had gotten in a big order of shipping tubes and I was taping all, you know, probably two minutes into taping tubes I uh, I had never used a tape gun before and <laughs> And I think Thomas just kind of assumed, well, I assumed that it would be easy to use because it's just a tape gun. And Thomas probably assumed that I had used one before. I had not. I smashed my thumb with the teeth of the tape gun like two minutes into it. 
there was a lot of blood and uh thomas's wife uh mandy gave me some fred flintstones uh bandages and uh at that point i thought i would probably never be called back because i almost stained his carpet with blood two minutes into it and uh a little while later i actually did get a call and i started uh formally in uh 2014 february early early 2014 helping out in the warehouse uh basically i was at that point i was working two part-time jobs this was one of them i would come into the warehouse and uh i would cut paper and stack play mats on the on the paper and in the early days we would just make one mat at a time so i you know if there were 20 orders i would come in and i'd cut each piece of paper uh and then get the play mat on top of the paper for our heat press technician to to run it through the heat press um, for people that don't know what our printing process is it's called sublimation and what sublimation does is it takes the solid ink that's on the paper and heats it up to the heat press heats it up to very high temperatures like over 300 degrees and the pressure from the heat press uh, actually pushes the ink into the fabric uh, so basically the heat vaporizes the ink there's nowhere for the vapor to go other than the play mat fibers itself and then that's how the art gets pushed into those fibers and is, is it's very very nice because uh, there's not really any fading it's part of the fiber itself so you're not going to have little pieces of it chip off or anything like you would a, a, a screen printed t-shirt or something uh, so that that was my early days of of helping in the warehouse, and then we got a a Reddit hug in 2014, where we did one month of sales in one day, and I was called in to do a uh, to work full time at that point, uh, and then that is the year where we we got a brand new heat press, uh, and we released custom sleeves which was very popular and it's something that we still want to bring back eventually but we released custom sleeves then and and i was part of that early project where we were figuring out how to do them and that the custom sleeve project seeing that come to life uh was one of the coolest experiences i was able to to ever do at inked um and that was just that was so much fun to do and then in 2015 we it was a very big year for ink gaming we added more sewn products. We added uh, uh, an amazing seamstress, Deanne, and we changed our name to Inked Gaming. And I think this was a really big turning point for Inked, Inked Gaming because when before we made made the name change, we were known as the Playmat Company. It was like, yeah, if you want custom playmats, go to this site. Otherwise, you know, we didn't really like we didn't offer enough accessories for people to come for other things. We did uh, offer some stuff, but we didn't really focus on that in our branding or anything. And changing our name to Inked Gaming opened up a lot of avenues. So that we, were, we were able to offer a lot more accessories. We were able to branch into other aspects of the gaming industry, of the tabletop industry, and of the PC gaming industry. And I mean, we, we've done all sorts of random crazy experiments in, in different industries after we have moved uh from ink playmats to ink gaming so two, 2015 was a huge turning point for our company and i i think that was one of the years when you look back on the company that's one of the big big years uh for us uh and then in 2016 and 2017 we we did a lot of uh we added more sewn products we added more mouse pads we added a lot of extra accessories and we started building the groundwork for uh, what you see today where we have, you know, it's kind of like if you want to get sleeves, you want to get deck boxes, like all those things are available on our site now. And that was kind of the, after we made the name change, that was the big picture game plan that, that Thomas wanted to do. Uh, and in 2016 and 2017, we started laying the groundwork for that. And that's where me personally, I moved on to a, into a bigger role at Inc. Gaming where I was doing a lot of customer service and I was working with sponsorships like uh, Team Metagame Gurus. I was one of the people that uh, really pushed for Inked Gaming to to start sponsoring uh, some of these 
esports type teams. Um, and that was kind of the, we, we brought in some mouse pads and we brought it, we, we, we just continued to expand in the PC gaming world while also expanding into the D and D side of things where, and the commander side of things. Uh, so then 2018, uh, we, we actually started in on licensing and other bigger picture stuff, kind of like, you know, like, like white labeling, like shipping for larger companies. Um, the licensing that we first started with was Scythe, uh, was the official Scythe mat. And we still have that on our site today and it still sells. It's still a very, very, very popular, uh, intellectual property by Stonemaier Games. The Scythe board game is something that I always highly recommend for people. It's, it's very fun. Uh, has a lot of customization to it. It's more than just a board game. It's, it's something that you will play over and over and over again. And a lot of people, that's their go-to board game that they've had for years. Um, and so that was 2018 was more movement into bigger picture stuff, I would say. And then we kind of got too big for our britches and uh, we needed, we needed uh, some more professionals to be hired on. And so that's when we, we hired Sarah, our, our now marketing manager, and we hired Kat, our now design manager. And that was, both of those hires were very, very big turning points for our company. Uh, Sarah was able to optimize some things in Facebook and Google that we were doing wrong or we hadn't focused on very much. And then Kat was able to, you know, start in on a project of doing this whole rebrand with a different logo. And our new logo, Kai, like I was mentioned at the beginning of the episode, um, Kai is such a cool, fun balance that I didn't ever think we would get to. Um, I think Kat perfected our logo and it kind of, she kind of took the previous, you know, seven years of, or eight years of inked gaming and kind of smooshed it all into one logo and one concept. And I really, really respect what she did with the brand. And I think it, it was, it was one of those things where, you know, there was a whole bunch of different drafts of the logo being sent over. And then when Kai sent it, or when Kat sent Kai over, uh, I saw it and I thought in my head, I'm like, yep, this is it. And then I see Thomas right, right in chat. Yep. We're going with this one. And it was just like, everybody was like, yep, that's the one. And I, I think that was a very, very fun, cool thing to see in, in live action, the, the full rebrand. And then with, with Sarah, I think Sarah's just an all-star at marketing. Um, we have added Vince underneath Sarah, um, who is a, a, a very, very good uh, blog writer, ad copywriter. Um, so the, mar the marketing team and the design team both have so much potential, and they are both doing such great things for us right now. Oh, and Kat's, uh, Kat's team. Uh, Lily and Chelsea, both of both of those junior designers, straight out of college, just amazing all stars at design. And I think, you know, both of these teams are very, very healthy, and will will be with us for a long time. And so in 2019, we we also started started adding more accessories, deck boxes, sleeves, we just basically started buying, you know, five of something, and then when it would sell out, we buy 10 of it. And then when it would sell out, you know, like, it was just basically feeling the market and feeling what customers wanted and how fast we would we would move through product. And then we kind of built what we have today based on you know the the speed in which customers wanted uh, these accessories on our site. And then on the other side of things, which kind of ties into the other part of our name, uh, Kraken Cards, uh, we started focusing a bit more on sports card breaking. So a little bit of background on that. The sports card industry and the trading card game industry are very similar in a lot of ways. Um, one of which people love watching you op open product. So basically have a YouTube channel or a Twitch channel or something, and you're just opening booster packs. People love it because they don't have to pay, you know, $4 per booster pack. They get to watch somebody, you know, excitedly opening, you know, a, a Charizard or a, you know, a Karn or whatever you're, whatever you're looking for in that, in that set. So 
to rewind a little bit, Thomas was actually one of the first people in the sports card breaking market before inked playmats. And uh, he kind of was, he kind of laid the groundwork for that industry um, well before sports card breaking mats had become even like a, a thing. Uh, but he was still selling these, you know, these play mats to these larger sports card breaking channels. Uh, and it isn't until recently uh, that there has turned into a market for them. Uh, because there's a lot of people, both in the TCG side and the sports card side, that want to, you know, stream their breaks uh, through whatever means, you know, Instagram, Facebook Live, uh, YouTube, Twitch, whatever. Uh, and they need their branded awesome mat because, you know, you don't want to, you know, just a table or something. Uh, and that provides a lot of a lot of branding and a lot of easy marketing for a lot of these breakers. So we, we shifted a, a little bit of our focus onto sports card breaking. And that's kind of what spawned Kraken Cards, which is our new opening storefront in Oregon, in, in downtown Corvallis, Oregon. We're going to be opening on November 1st. So if you're in Oregon, uh, look, well, we're hoping for an opening on November 1st, let's say. Uh, but because of COVID-19 and restrictions and stuff, we're not we're not 100% that it's going to be November 1st, but that's the hope. Uh, and Kraken Cards is going to be a, uh, it's going to be a hybrid of both the tabletop gaming industry as well as the sports card industry. It's going to be a very uh, clean, nice, you know, storefront that you could bring your parents into and they would be, you know, be happy to sit and watch some some beaver sports game or, you know, the, the trailblazers or something, and they wouldn't feel out of place. It's going to be very, very inclusive for, for like all different walks of life. And it's not going to be one of those cluttered hobby shops that you see um, in, in the market today. And I'm not, you know, we're not disparaging uh, the, the clutter collectible, uh, you know, storefronts, but this is kind of um, a different take on your local game store. And uh, we're, we're kind of taking pride in, in being as clean as possible, as welcoming as possible, and and open to all different walks of, of life of, of, of people. So that's going to be a tabletop, uh, you know, it's going to be a tabletop accessory storefront. We're going to have sports cards as well. We're going to have trading cards, board games, probably going to have games like cribbage, you know, just any type of game that you can just sit down with a buddy and 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 watch a watch a uh, uh, you know a twitch stream or a basketball game or something uh, we're hoping to have there so uh yeah it will be corvallis oregon which is in the willamette valley uh it's near albany it is in the same town as the oregon state university so look for that uh and now we are going to move into what this podcast will be about after episode one. So I gave you the background on, on you know, Inked Gaming, Inked Playmats, and Cracking Cards. And now we're going to take a look at the different cast of characters that we're going to be having on this show and what their strengths are and what their interests are and why we will be interviewing them and, and chatting with them. So I will always be your host, Mitch. Uh, I've been with Inked Gaming for seven years, almost seven years. I have a back, an extensive background in Magic the Gathering, uh, Twitch streaming, and a lot, a lot of other video games and card games. Uh, I grew up in the golden era of Pokemon. I was seven years old when I bought Pokemon Red. My brother, who is six, he bought Pokemon Blue. And, uh, it's kind of kind of it from there, and then and then I learned how to play Magic that same year, uh, and I was kind of hooked in the the gaming world ever since then. Uh, so the other so I'll always be here. The other uh, cast, the other hosts. Let's go down the line. We're gonna have Thomas, who is the owner of both uh, Inked Gaming and Kraken Cards. Thomas has an extensive background in sports cards, as well as an extensive background in Magic: The Gathering. He is also the spikiest board game player I've ever seen. 
meaning that he will be the most he will take the most optimal way to win every single time and fun is always second <laughs> thomas wants to destroy you and have fun at the same time and uh that is you can kind of see that drive in uh how he runs his businesses too because he is a very good business owner and it's, it, he's always trying to be super thoughtful and methodical and thinking through how he can go through, you know, managing a, a company at the most optimal way. Uh, and that kind of, that kind of sums up Thomas, uh, Thomas, you know, in the, in the gaming side of things, he's always sitting, buying and selling sports cards, always looking for the next new project. And, uh, he has a lot of, I don't know if anybody, uh, follows, uh, uh, Gary V, but I feel like Gary V and Thomas have a lot of similar qualities as as CEOs and managers of people. So moving on to uh, JT. JT is one of the most passionate people uh, I have ever met with anything he takes on. JT uh, is a professional yo-yoer, a former competitive Pokemon uh, trading card game player, uh, him and him, me and Ryan are actually jumping back into that right now. And it's been a lot of fun. Um, magic player, poker player, Hearthstone player, anything that is competitive and you can, uh, improve at, uh, JT is very, very interested in, and you can tell in, in the way he speaks about his interests that he is extremely passionate and extremely thoughtful in, in, you know, all of his different hobbies. Um, so we'll be having him on for a lot of the card game talk. And then moving on to Ryan. Ryan is uh, a level two judge. P probably my favorite judge. I I I've played in hundreds of competitive REL events over the years. And I think Ryan is one of the, I, one of the level two judges that I think could become a level three judge. If they if they still have that program after after COVID, I'm really hoping for, you know, everything to get back to normal and the judge community to get back to normal and stuff. But I think Ryan is an exceptional judge, an exceptional uh, person to be able to deal with situations and problems as they arise at at gaming tables and conventions. Uh, he's also a very very good card player. I, some of my most favorite Magic: The Gathering memories. Are playing against him. I was one one time. I was I was actually in tears from crying, laughing, uh, because he Ravens crimed. Okay, so here's the story. I have mold, Mulligan to five. My hand is Mountain. Three random cards that I can't cast, and an obstinate Bailoff. He's playing a like a weird homebrew deck or something. I don't remember what he was playing, but. We're at a, like a modern win a box, and uh, he he's on the play and he keeps seven, and he turn one just Raven Ravens crimes me, and I drop an obstinate bailoff onto the field, and uh, oh yeah he fetches shocks then Ravens crimes me and then I drop an obstinate bailoff onto the field, and I got him to, I think I got him to two, no wait it would have been three because he fetched and shocked so I got him down to three life, and uh, he won the game but I was just. It was hilarious because I was like, I had nothing in my hand that was working. I had one mountain in play, but I was hitting, smacking him with this four four. Many of my games against Ryan have been have been hilarious. Uh, and yeah, so he's he actually also hit number one in uh, Pokemon trading card game online the other day, uh, and is also an amazing commander player and Magic just overall Magic the Gathering player. So we'll be having Ryan on a lot for Magic talk. I I and and Pokemon talk. I. I expect. And then moving on, Tristan. Tristan is a semi-newcomer to Inked Gaming. Uh, he's still going to university and is probably one of the most knowledgeable commander players I have ever run across. He has over 20 commander decks and is always thinking about uh, random combos and brews and is always writing down different uh, deck lists and, and coming up with different uh, fun interactive ways to play commander and i think tristan will be an amazing add-on to to the uh to the ink gaming lineup and the kraken cards lineup when we when we talk about commander um 
And then moving on to Sarah and the, the marketing team, I think bringing on Sarah and Vince will be a lot of fun to kind of see the marketing side of Kraken Cards and Ink Gaming and see what they're doing on, on their end. And I think it could be a lot of different, you know, fun educational things with that. Also, both of them are very into to gaming and the gaming world. And, you know, Sarah is very into D&D. &D, so I'm thinking maybe we could have some D&D &D episodes of, of maybe reviewing different D&D uh, &D podcasts or something. And then Vince is always uh, playing on uh, PS uh, consoles. And uh, so I think, I think the marketing team would, would be a lot of fun to have on from time to time, both educational and gaming side. And then moving on to Jim. Jim is the Sherpa Jim, uh, known in the, our customer service as Sherpa Jim. Jim is the most knowledgeable person about board games I have ever met. Um, I think having Jim on at least once a, once a month, maybe more, talking about random board games that he's playing, that he's played, that he's reviewed, it will be very, very great for this podcast. Uh, I think Jim also is one of the funniest people on planet Earth, uh, and he does it in a way that is 100% Jim. You know, he's not, you know, he's not stealing jokes. He's not, you know, he's coming up with random, crazy dad jokes and always has something to contribute to the conversation that's wacky and off the wall. And uh, I can't wait to get started with, with Jim and Board Game Talk. Uh, the other thing about Jim is that Jim does PC game, uh, so we could have Jim on with some random uh, PC game reviews or just, you know, talking about that world and that industry. And then moving on to Kat and the design team. So uh, the design team is also just a hilarious bunch, and all, all of them, um, Kat, Lily, uh, Chelsea, and Hannah, uh, let's not forget Hannah, the um, artist, you know, program rep, and also helps with the design team from time to time. All four of them are, I think they all, I mean, we, we all play d and I think they all played d and before this, I'm pretty sure. Um, I know that Kat was, you know, very big into d and before uh, working at Inked. I know Lily is very into Pokemon Go, which I am also into Pokemon Go. Lily just hit level 40, I'm level 37. Uh, and then, you know, Chelsea is very into Magic the Gathering and Commander. Uh, and then Hannah is also into D&D. &D. So having the design team on, doing educational design discussions, uh, and kind of looking at what's going on with Kraken and Inked Gaming from the design world, as well as talking about different, you know, gaming aspects will be a lot of fun as well. So, uh, you know, that's, that's the team that I see us having on. There are way more people that work for Inked, and I probably we probably will have them on from time to time. Um, these are the people that that uh, reached back to me and said that they would have interest in coming on and and helping out, contributing to the Inked Gaming podcast. And then you know we're going to just also have friends of Inked Gaming on. So you know if you're in the area and you are passionate about something in the gaming world and want to, you know be a guest on the the uh the the cast then feel free to reach out to me at mitch at inkedgaming.com and we can schedule a date uh all of these podcasts are going to be recorded at our storefront which is in downtown corvallis so it's a very very easy place to get to uh we would love to have you on and it would one of my favorite things in life is listening to people talk about things they're passionate about i got that from day nine uh, one of my one of my gaming heroes, and one, when he said that, I never really thought about th thought about the the idea of that. But then I started noticing in my life when people talked about things that they really really enjoyed and they were really passionate about, even if it was things that I had no interest in ever getting into. It just made it excited me and it made me want to get into it. And I think having people like that. Uh, from all walks of the gaming industry in the gaming life will be will be a lot of fun on this on this podcast so with that i want to thank you for listening to episode one i can't wait to get started on this 
and I can't wait to get to episode seven. seven. No, let's let's go for nine thousand and one, so we can say we were over nine thousand. And there's a meme from the nineties, I think, maybe early two thousands. All right, Mitch out. Thank you for listening to High Tide with Kai, an Inked Gaming and Kraken Cards podcast. And now I, I think I need some more of that lo-fi stuff. Uh, can we get that going again, DJ? All right, let's go.